So welcome to chapter five, lesson six. We're going to look at how we can add video textures. Um, the videos, they're, they're a little bit tricky to get to work in, in Unity, but once you've made one, it's easy to copy and paste and, and repeat the, the, the objects. So what we're going to do is we're going to take um, my logo that I've got here, um, which uh, is just an animated version of my, my flame logo, um, and we're going to put that on a plane just to demonstrate how you can make a video. So it's not part of the scene, but we're just going to, to build it in. Uh, what you could do, if you wanted to, if you had a project like this one, is replace the triangle at the back with uh, a, a triangular UV mapped mesh. We had a square UV map over the triangle. You could then place a video texture over that for the square tiles and have that animated in something like After Effects. So you don't have to think about building emissive materials for each individual cube. You just build one emissive material for the whole lot with a video texture on it. So let's, let's start by uh, building a plane, which is going to be our uh, our video wall, and let's just make it a bit smaller, way too big a moment. There we are, 0.2 for everything. Let's drag it down, and I'm just gonna make it a little bit wider. In fact, let's just check what is the aspect ratio of my video. Does it say here? No, let's have a look in Explorer. Show in Explorer, um, and click on my properties. And drag that over so you can see it. Uh, it's 1920 by 1080, of course it is. So a good thing to do then with something like this is we can make the scale, I'll start off by making it, let's get to right around, 1.9, no, 1.9 by 1.08. You see that's 19, 20, oh, add the two, uh, by 1080, it's basically what that is, but to scale. So now let's just scale that uniformly down we maintain the aspect ratio, but we've got a uh, an HD plane effectively. Now I can't just drag my video onto that. It doesn't want to do that. It's uh, it's added a video player, which we do need to do, um, but it won't actually play anything. What we need to do is we need to add a video player here. Um, now this is a separate object. Now you could have this built in. I find it easier to have it as a separate element that sits outside and then renders into the plane. What you effectively have to do is you have to get the render, uh, the video player to render to a render texture, and that render texture then can be applied to your material inside your plane. So you could do all that inside one element, but it's uh, th this is my approach anyway. So I'm going to grab my logo intro and drag it into the video clip here. So there we go. So now that's going to create a loop, video clip, um, and it's going to render to render texture. Now I could set a material override. It's other ways of doing it. I'm just going to show you this way to start with. Um, apply it to render texture. I don't have any render textures at the moment, so I have to create one of those. So in here, I'm going to create a render texture. Oh, where was it? Render texture. Um, and I'm going to call that uh, logo video and then underscore render texture, just so it's clear to me later what that object is meant to be. I know in theory the logo at the front should show you what it is. Um, I may forget that it's actually meant to be a render texture, but when I'm looking at it later it might not make any sense. So I click on my video player and go to render texture. I can then drag that into that space and in theory if I play my logo is it going to show it in the render texture now? No it's not, but you might need to trust me that it's there. To trust myself that it's there. So now on this plane I'm going to create a new material because this material is not editable. I can't do anything here. So let's go back to my material library, my custom materials. I've got scenery. In fact, actually, no, let's put it in logos. And I'm going to create a new material. And I'm going to call it video mat. There we go. Uh, and I'm going to click and drag that onto my screen. And then for my base map, I'm going to add in that render texture I just created. Where's it gone? Uh, textures. Let's click on my, my plane again and click and drag the render texture and put it into. Oh, no, hang on. Down there. Uh, render texture, click and drag it onto the base map. There we go. All right, now if I play my logo, in fact, I think I'll have to just play in the video. I have to hit play. Fingers crossed. This will work. There we go. And there's my logo playing. In fact, it's done something else weird to the aspects. It must have some, some banding on the video. Um, so it's automatically trying to load that on. But there you go, that's basically what you're doing. Now what you can get clever with this, we could also, on the on the material, because this, this material works like any other material, and this render texture is like any other texture. So let's um, let's have some fun. Let's also put this into the emissive channel. Oh, let me turn it on first. 
But you don't have to have it on the base map, I should say, as well, if you're doing this. Uh, we're going to dump it up a couple of bits. So now we've got a glowing screen. So now it's got some emission to it. So let's hit play. There we go. Now it looks like a, a video screen that's actually glowing and lighting things. Um, so that's a bit of fun. Now you can also do this as a material override. Um, now what I could do is I've, I've built this material already and I've, I've imported the base map. So let's just remove these. Uh, scroll back up and choose none to get rid of it. And this one here, scroll up and do none. Let's take the, uh, where is it, where is it? I want my, I don't want the render texture. I want the video player, which of course is up here. So I'm going to choose material override. And then here I'm going to click and drag in that material I just created for the plane. Oh, to lock it in. Oh, I'll play it again. There we go. Right, click on that. Video material. Material override. Oh, no, it's not having it. It doesn't like it. It needs, it needs a renderer. So it's looking for my, um, my an object. So that is going to be my plane. There we go. And now it knows to apply that material override to whatever material was built into that plane. And here it's been applying to main text. Um, I actually find it works best by applying it to the uh, emission map. So this is now directing that to the emission map. And it's also going to play audio out of there as well if you had audio. So now if I hit play, now I've got some HDR, so I'll turn that off. Now if I hit play, again, fingers crossed it's going to work. And it hasn't, hasn't worked. So the idea is that that should be driving the emission map in the video. Let's try changing it instead to base map. There we go. It's playing on base map, uh, and will it play on main text? Is what it was trying to do in the first place? No. Okay, so it works on base map. Maybe what you need to do is, um, is, is you can have a, you know a few of these, and you can have another one laid on top to also do um, the the emission map. Or maybe it's not doing that because we turned emission off. Let's go and turn emission on. Just do that. Now we can't see it, so let's change that from base map to emission map. There we go. And we could try turning the, uh, the HDR down a little bit so it's not glowing quite so much. It's kind of hard to see though, isn't it? So there, there's a couple of options. That's why I prefer render textures anyway, because you treat it like a normal texture and you just do what you want of it. But you can also do a material override um, and get your video in there. So that's how you do video textures. Um, and thank goodness you turned off that audio with the woman shouting awaiting instructions because that would have been a bit annoying, wouldn't it? In the next lesson, we're going to look at how we can add characters for reference. I'm actually going to try and be clever here and import some motion capture data as well um, so we can see somebody dancing on the stage as a reference so we can see what a person looks like in the light and the scene. And then that sort of finishes off the design part of the, uh, of the training. We're then going to move on to Playmaker in the next chapter and have a look at how we can build controls that can be used by uh, a user once we build the scene out later on. So I'll see you in the next lesson.